Hello and welcome back to part two of my sockets and MVVM video series. Um, so in the previous example or previous video, sorry, we saw the layout architecture and in this case we're going to apply it to an example. So one you already know. So this is the next part of the uh, video. I'm going to go through this part here, de developing the uh, UML, the class diagram, and then after watching part three, we're going to code the example. So part one was all about introducing the layered architecture. And um, all right, so uh, first uh, current status, I have a local version. So this is the my, my GitHub, and this is where you can look at the code. So I'm not going to go through the code for this version. So maybe before you uh, continue the video, I'm just going to show you what the status is. But afterwards, you should probably pause and then make sure that you, you have some kind of basic understanding of uh, the, the starting point of my example here. So it's the um, two uppercase uh, program, which is, is super simple. There is uh, one view where I can insert a string and click a button and then that's sent to the model and the model will change the string to uppercase and show it back in the view. I also keep track of all the requests made so I can see that in the log view. So I have my, my UML diagram here, fairly low detail, that's missing some stuff, but I have the important parts. Again, the general structure, our template to the MVVM with the core part, I have my views. I am going to have two views, so I have two packages for that. You may notice my view controller interface, um, something new I've been trying out, which can reduce the lines of code in my view handler a bit. Um, I have my model down here and my model is keeping track of, I have called them for lack of a better idea, I call it input output. So this one just uh, has the what string was sent to the model and what string was sent back again. So the two uppercase result here. So I just have a bunch of these in a list and that's basically my, my log, which can be seen over here. I have my util package with the subjects, meaning that the uh, model here is a subject so that we can listen to it from the view models up here. It's not currently used, but I may need it uh, later on. So let me just uh, run the program so you can see what it looks like. Hang on. All right, I have started my program. Here we go. So I can uh, insert some text, I can submit it, and it's returned to me as our case. That's wonderful, and I can submit something else. I've submitted that, and that's also given back our case, and uh, hello, whatever. Okay, and I can go to the log, and it will show me the uh, requests I've made and the results. I can go back again and give it something new. Uh, something new. And that's uppercase, and I could go to the log and I see the, the result here. So that's the, the status, and it's currently just all running uh, locally. It's just one program, so there's no client-server stuff in it. So this is what I have put on GitHub with my core and my model and my util and the views, and um, also the SVG. I wonder if I can open it here. Oh, there we go. So this is the class diagram, and in the second Maybe I shouldn't have opened that. And my second package, uh, here we go, socket our case. That's what we are going to, um, this is where I will put the, the new updated version um, with the client server part. All right, so um, back to the PowerPoint. There we go. Let me just find a laser pointer, okay. So this is the, the current approach and I want to change this so that instead of my model here converting it to uppercase, doing my business logic and my, I know my business logic in this case is super boring, but it's just a representation for whatever complicated business logic you couldn't come up with. So instead of doing it on the client side, we want to do that on the server side. Maybe at some point in your semester project, you're going to need a database and do some business logic calculations modifications, whatever, uh, on on the things you get out of the database. So we just take the functionality that's currently on the client side and we want to put that 
onto the uh, server side. So again, this example is basically as simple as I can make it and still show you, um, you know, the most relevant functionality. So back to my layer structure. Currently I have the top part here, my GUI, my view and my model. Um, we are going to add this part. So some networking stuff and a server side model. And then for this video, uh, I will ignore the database access, access part. Um, that's being left out for now. All right, so expanding on the class diagram a little bit, this is what my final system will look like, more or less. Again, missing some details here and there. I have the most important parts. Um, I know it's a bit difficult to see, but basically I have my client side. That's the pink package here. You may recognize the MVVM, the basic structure, my, my previous example, or you know the current one. And I have added an extra package, which is the client side networking. And then we have the server package down here. So this is where my server program is, is running with a server networking package and a model down here. And uh, I have some extra stuff over here. Oh, so that's something that will be used by both the client and the server side. So usually I like to define, divide my program into a client package, a server package and a, a shared package, or at least something that's shared by both. Um, you might take it a step further and create a module for your client and a module for your server and then a module for everything that's shared between them to make sure you're not accidentally importing something on the client side that belongs on the server side or the other way around. A, a mistake that's more common that, that I would like is that something on the client side has direct access to your database down here, which is definitely not how you should structure your program. So if you start importing on your client side, if you start importing stuff that is in the server package or in the server module, then you are on the wrong track. Okay, so this is the overview and it's uh, pr pretty difficult to see what's going on. So let's just zoom in. And again, you may, you may recognize the uh, UML from, from the previous class diagram. I have my uppercase view con uh, controller and view model here. So that's for the for the view where I can insert some text and get a result back. I have the log, I have my model, I have my core, and I have added a new factory, which is the client factory. So again, my association is going downwards here. My view handler has a, an association to a view model factory, which has an association to a model factory, which now has an association to the client factory. And the client factory is also created up here along with all the rest of these. Uh, factories and view handlers, all created up here and put together. And um, again, I've left left out a few arrows. My view handler is supposed to indicate here that it creates the views, uh, loads the FXML and creates the controllers. My view model factory creates this part here, the view models and these guys, my controllers, they also have a, an association back to the view handler so they can call methods on here. All right, so we scroll down a little bit and look at the new added part. I have my client factory, which can return an instance of a client. So again, we have the dependency inversion here. My model just depends on an interface. So whether it's sockets or remote method invocation or REST or something else down here, the rest of my, my system, everything above here does not need to care about it. Um, so we have the interface, I have my socket client I have a handler, so that's my thread. Uh, this arrow indicates that this here is an internal class. Uh, at the time of designing this, I planned on having this here being an anonymous, anonymous implementation in the server client. We'll see how that turns out. Maybe I, I decide against it and make a separate class. We scroll a bit, uh, no, not yet. So that's the client part. Everything you see in the pink box, that belongs to my client program. And we scroll down and we see the server part here. It's connected to my client. So I also have a thread, my socket handler on the server side and the communication happens th uh, through these mainly. Um, I have my model, my text manager here, 
is the one that now supports the functionality of keeping track of the logs and changing strings to uppercase. Again, fairly boring uh, business logic, but um, it's just an example. If I wanted to add some data access, there would be another package down here, and my text manager implementation would have an association to an interface down here, or more interfaces. Again, I can have I have mentioned this in class, I can of course have multiple models if that's uh, necessary. And the same thing on the client side, I just have one model because I have very little logic going on, just changing to uppercase, but I could have multiple models. That's uh, very valid. Um, it's uh, another part of the solid principle, single responsibility or uh, interface segregation. If you apply those, that might sometimes lead you to having multiple models. I have a package over here with my transfer objects. So those are the objects that I'm going to send back and forth across the network. And that's about it. So that's the entire UML diagram. And if we compare this to the layered architecture that we saw in the previous video, or oh, well, I have a previous video, I don't know if you saw it, that's the intention at least, then here we go. That's my layered architecture. Let me just spread it out a little bit so it fits. And to make it even more clear what's going on, so what part is part of which layer, let's do it like this. All right, so we can see the model. I have the border to the model of a gateway. We have some client side and server side networking, again, hidden by an interface, client model, interface, and then the GUI stuff here. So I have applied my general layered architecture to my program over here. I hope you can see the, the similarities. All right, so that's it for part two. We have taken the layered architecture, we have applied it to a very simple example. And um, in part three, we're going to implement this example. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next part.